So, hello everyone. Welcome to this episode six of uh, recursion plays. That is the subset sum problem. The, the day before we discussed about the Josephus, Josephus problem. I mentioned the link as well as the question link here. You can go and solve it. So let's proceed with this today's problem. That is subset sum problem. So let me give you hmm, the test cases that how it is that how it is working. So subset is nothing but if you if you have a set let's say one two and three then any such combination of numbers which is already a part of this set in this set given then that is considered a subset right so for this particular set one two three subsets will be the empty set the one the two, and three and then again the combination of two numbers now that one two one three and two three and again the combination of three numbers that is one two and three, right so this is the thing so far uh for so far a given a numbers and the possible subsets form is 2 power n, right? And if you count is like 2 power 3 is 8. So if you count the first column, first row is saying that there are 4 subsets, 4 plus 3, 8, 4 plus 3, 7, and this last one has 8, right? Okay. So what we need to do is that in the input test case, we are given these numbers like 10, 5, 2, 3, and 6. You need to tell the count of the subset which has the sum as this given sum equals 8, right? So you can clearly see that there are only two possible subsets that is 2 comma 6 and 5 comma 3 that will sum up to 8. Similarly for the second test case let's say you have the elements 10 20 and 15 and the required sum to make is 25. So there is only one subset that is 10 comma 15 which will sum up to 25 right. So how should we proceed on this problem. So pause the video here and think of a recursive solution that how, do, how we will do so. So I have drawn the recursion tree for you guys and this problem is exactly similar to the problem where we we discussed how to generate the subsets in lecture 4 right so must visit that lecture and the same recursive tree I have drawn here that is the intuition is that either to take an element that either to take or not take right this is this is where we found the all the subsets at the last level right so how this recursion is going is that we are calling a function that is taking that is not taking the element that is not considering and in the next step it is considering right and we are starting from this pointer from the last pointer so the first step it would be that it, it is not considering right and then it goes in this direction of not considering right if you if i just write the pseudo code for you it will be like let's say you will have a count subset function which will input the input array it will take int n as parameter right and we'll just have to call the function of let's say count s yeah, i'm just calling it for array of n minus one right and then I'm calling of array of n minus one. So here I'm not taking anything. So the sum will be as it is, but here I'm considering. So I will just say sum is equals to array of n minus one, right? How this is working is the first call is, is for uh, not taking the element. So I will just write NT and this is for to take the element. So it opens with left branch taking uh, not considering the element. Then it goes further for not considering and going goes further, right? So this is the last level. This is the level level where the elements exhaust right this was the level for n equals to 3 for n equals to 2 and then n equals to 1 n equals to 0 after this n equals to 0 you do not have such uh, what elements so clearly the base cases will be like if n equals equals to 0 you have to do something you have to return you have to return that you have to stop it here right then the the call goes back to parent that is 2 and it consider the element at the 0th index and if you recall the elements were 10 the elements were 10, 20, and 15. So at for n equals to 0, it considered the 10 element, right? It, it again call back to its parent that is here. And it consider the n we are at n equals to 1 level. So it consider this first the the one the first index element that is 20. And then for the left call, it does not take the element. In the right call, it again take the element for n equals to 0, that is 20, comma 10, right? Similarly, the parent the parent callback will come for this at root root node and it is saying that i am considering the element but this level is what for n equals to 3 because we are passing the parameters as n and we are reducing by n minus 1 in each recursive call so it takes the element for n equals to n equals to 3 that is the index that is the second index that is the last element that is here it takes the 15 then the left call it will again go for that i'm not taking any other element so it will be again 15 right and it will again go here it will be 15 right and then it will just uh, Take the n equals to 0 at 15 comma 10 and again the call by call will be back to its parent that, that is 15 and it will call the right hand child that the right that right recursive tree is coming from this so for n equals to 1 
the element is again 20 so it will consider 15 comma 20 in the left recursive call it is again not considering any more elements of so 15 comma 20 and in the right recursive call it is considering the n equals to zeroth element so if you clearly observe that when I, when when we are at this last element uh, last level the all the subsets all the possible subsets of this uh, uh, 15 10 15 and 20 are there right so we have to do some we have to check it here that if the sum if the sum of each subset if it is equals to the uh, given sum then you have to consider that subset right so clearly the uh, base cases will be for if n equals to zero right but instead of calculating sum for each and every subset and rather in increasing a complexity by o of n extra because we will be using a linear traversal to calculate the sum we uh, we uh, passed one more parameters that is sum right so initially the sum when we are at this root node it is 25 right so whenever whenever we are considering the element when we are not considering we are just passing this sum again but whenever we are considering the elements we are passing we are updating the sum as sum minus the the elements which we have taken right so so i guess uh, pause this video again here and update this recursive tree with the sum values and we will continue again so if we have done it then it's very good otherwise we will do it live here so since you have not considered the element the sum will be passed again as 25 similarly not considered the sum will be 25 again and here also it will be 25 again but when we do the right recursive call with that you took an element 10 right so it will be updated as 25 minus 10 that is 15 the sum is updated to 15 now now when you are this parent call this parent call the sum was 25 and you have considered the element 20 so the sum will be updated to 5 similarly for the left call you have not taken any more elements so it will be 5 again but in the right call you have taken one more element that is 10 right so the sum will be updated as 5 minus 10 that is minus 5 right and what it is depicting it is depicting that you have considered a bunch of elements and the current sum is there present there yeah. hmm. like this if you have considered 20 comma uh, 10 in a subset then the sum was only 25 given right so you have the resultant sum of 30 minus 25 like a target sum 25 minus the current sum that is 30 that would give us the negative 5 right okay so again the sum is 25 here if you if you go at the right uh, uh, recursion tree so you have considered the element 15 the sum will be updated at 25 minus 15 that is 10 and it will remain 10 here it will remain 10 here because you are not taking any more elements in the left recursive call so when you go for 15 right you have taken one more element that is 20 right so it will be updated as 10 minus 20 that is minus 10 right similarly you have not taken any more elements in this recursive call so it will be updated as minus 10 and here we have left one thing so you have taken 10 the root node here is saying that i have the sum as 10 and you have considered one more element that is 10 right so it will be updated as 0 right and as you can see Whenever the sum is getting as zero, you can see that the target sum and the subset sum is now equal. If you compare the sum, it is 10 plus 15, that is 25, right? And that is what we want. So that means whenever when when I'm at the last level, because that's that's where my subset will be present, right? All the possible subsets. So I will say that return uh, like return one only if only if sum is equals equals to zero. If it is equals, then return one or else zero, right? Returning one means that I have the answer from here. I have one answer and I will return that I got one subset which has the sum equals to the target sum, right? Again, for this thing, uh, let's update all the sum values again. So it is minus 10 and here 15, uh, the sum is, the sum is what? Uh, let me, let me, the, the sum is minus 10. And again, you have taken one more element that is 10. So it will be minus 20 here. For this call, it will be minus 20. So there is no other subsets in this last n equals to zero, which is returning, which is returning one, right? So there is only one possibility that is this one, which has the subset sum as 25. So how should we write the code, right? So how the value should be returned now, how the value should be returned. So uh, this has, if n equals equals to zero, the sum should be zero, right? But you can see the sum is 25 here. So it will return zero and this will also return zero. Similarly, this will also return zero this will return 0 this will return 0 and this will return 1 similarly this will return 0 and this also will return 0 right now i want to maintain the count like the all the number of subsets which was contributing in my answer so I'll, what i will do i will just do plus here right i want all the subsets from both the branches where my answer is getting right where my answer is reaching so i return the both the recursive call with the addition thing so in the next level since the both these things are returning uh, what zero 
So the parent call will return 0 plus 0, that is 0. Here also the parent call will return 0 plus uh, 0 plus 0, that is 0. And again, this will return 0 plus 1, that is 1, right? But in this call, it will return 0 plus 0, that is 0, right? And again, this will continue on and it will return, it will return 0, it will return again 1, and finally it will return 1. So this is our answer, right? So that's a pseudocode, and I, I showed you how the recursion tree is working. So let us code this solution. Let us try and code this solution that how the things are. Okay, so that's the pseudocode here. So let's drive in for this same test case that is 10, 20, and 15. And let's see it. So I'll open my Eclipse editor. So I'll explain you the code what I have written. So in Java, we use the scanner class to get input from the user. So I have taken input of n, that is the number of elements in the array, and then I have used this for loop to input the elements in our array, and then the sum that what's the target sum you want to make, right? And then you just have to call the function and print its returning value. So what's what I was writing in the base case that if n equals to zero, that means that all the subsets were present at this level. That's why we are writing the base case here, right? Right? And if the sum is equals to zero, that means that you have achieved the sum of the possible subset as the target sum. So if it is zero, then return one that yes, I have the answer from here, else zero, I don't have the answer, right? And you just have to, uh, what? Uh, recur this function two times, that is, you are take, not taking the element, that is why the sum is passed as it is, and if you're taking the elements, you have to subtract the sum from there, right? So this is not take plus take uh, order, and, and since we want all the possibilities, that all the possible subsets that having sum equals to the target sum, that is why using the addition here, right? So let us run this program. So we have run, we have run the program. So, uh, okay. So let me input the array elements were three and it was 10, 15 and 25, right? No, 10, 20 and 15, it was 10, 20 and 15 and the target sum is 25. So if I hit the enter, it will say that only one possible subset, right? So let's, uh, Let's run it again for other test cases that we explained. So it was 10, 5, 2, 3, 6, and sum is equals to 8, right? So I will say the elements are 5, it is 10, 5, 2, 3, and 6, and the sum required is 8. So it will return true. So that's great. We have understand the subset sum, sum problem. Also, let's discuss about one of, one of the variation that we have in our GFG, right? So we have this problem. I'll mention this problem link uh, the same way I mentioned in my SD sheet like this. I will just, uh, you can click this problem and go ahead. Uh, you will be like uh, forwarded to this problem, right? Okay, so what this uh, question says is that uh, given an array of non-negative integers and a value sum, determine if there's a subset given that with the sum equal to given sum, right? So for n equals to six, as you can see, array is given and sum is equals to nine. As, as, and as you can see that you can take four plus three plus two, that sums up to nine. And you just have to return one. If there is a single subset also, you just have to return, okay, it's possible. You don't have to count all the possible subsets, right? For this thing also, you can see for uh, n equals to six and the sum is 30. So there is no subset with sum 30. That is why they have returned it as zero, right? So what should be the changes in our code? We will call the same function with array n and n and sum. And we will do the same recursion that we take the element and we do not take the element. But what is here happening is you have to not consider the case of returning all the possibilities. You just have to return if there is a single possibility also, right? Then you have to return true. So what I will do, I will I will maintain a ZOR operation here, right? ZOR operation. So instead of instead of returning this thing, that instead of returning sum, it will return the ZOR. So 0, ZOR, 1, it will be 1, right? It will be one and in all the cases it will be one so suppose it, it would have been one one here and one here also both in both cases so if i do the plus sign then it will return two right but i just want to say that if there is a subset possible or not right so that is why i'm returning the left call with the right call of or operation so i will say one or one one or one uh, let me write it clearly for you it will be one or one and it will return one right so that is why we are using the OR operation and not the addition operation here. Let's back to the question again and we'll run the code and we'll see for ourselves. And the base case remains the same that at the last level only we are forming all the possible subsets. So if the sum is zero, return true, else false. So let's compile and run for this test case. Uh, 
okay so uh, your output and expected output matches so let's run it for the test case which is given here and it is given as it is given as the n is equals to 6 and the numbers are 3 34 and 4 and 12 and 5 and 2 right and the sum is given as 9 okay that is it so let's compile and run again and we'll see for ourselves great the expected output and our output matches but i will not hit the submit button before hitting the submit button we will discuss the time complexity of this right so what is happening is at the root at the root at the leaf nodes we can see that there are two power n leaves right because for each uh, the for each n um, set you can form two power n subsets right and there is a two power n minus one internal nodes right these are the nodes where the level n equals to two three two and one right so the time complexity will be o of 2n right that's the case or you can also argue with other logic that for each node we are making two calls right for a left call and right call and how many levels are there there are n levels so it will be 2 power n right so that's uh, the other thing but uh, the time complexity will be o of 2 power n and let's let's see what's the constraint is given in this question so the constraint given is constraint given is 200 right so if i if I if I calculate what is 2 power 100, let me give me one more additional info here. What is 2 power 100? It will definitely exit 10 power 8, right? And whenever you have this complexity exiting 10 power 8, you will get TLE, right? So you have to code this approach in a more efficient, right? And if you have studied recursion, that means the optimization is nothing but using the sub problems, using the sub problems. In the recursion and that gives is the definition of dp right so if you use the dp the same problem will be solved in o of n but that will i will not explain it here you must watch the dp series for the same to getting the same understanding so i will just show you that this thing will get the tle so let me hit the submit button and we will verify that it will get the tle for sure so let's see that So as you can see there are only two test cases passed right so we have to optimize this code and the optimization is done by dp we will look that look that thing in the dp section because this is about all about recursion and that's it i hope you are uh, get a clear understanding how the recursive tree is working as well as the code so let's meet in the next video uh next videos and uh, we will we will come resume our playlist that is for recursion trees graphs and dp so till then keep learning keep growing and take care Bye bye